The 9800X3D is the world's fastest CPU for gaming. It's sold out everywhere. Everyone wants one. I managed to get one on launch day and I have spent the time to test every single setting to see what gets the highest performance out of the 9800X3D. AMD's main selling point really on the 9800X3D is that you don't need fast RAM and you don't need to overclock it. You just need to plug the CPU in and you're good. The 3D vCache really does raise your 1% and 0.1% lows, which is what really matters for gaming. So I decided to put my PC to the test. The motherboard I have is the X870E Strix. It is my favorite motherboard by Asus, as well as two by 16 8200 Patriot kits. I will make sure you guys know what memory speed they're running because I am not running at 8200 for any of these tests actually. And then my 4090 running at its max overclock to remove any GPU bottleneck. I did not include any specific two to one memory overclocks just because I do not have two by 24 M die, which is better it seems for these two to one modes because you can get that higher speed. Every single test I've done is something either someone in my discord wants to see or someone I personally wanna see. And because of the amount of tests, I had to only pick two games. I chose Black Ops 6 using the built-in in-game benchmark and then Fortnite using this creative map. So if you are interested, feel free to compare to my results as well. This was done at 1080p low. Starting out with comparing a stock 9800X3D to optimized settings, you will see that you get not that really good of an improvement in Call of Duty at about 1.5% in the lows, something that isn't really massive at all. But in something like Fortnite, you are getting about a 5% boost in the lows. And trust me, a 5% boost in the lows is something that you will notice. Optimized settings for me includes enabling XMP at 6000 CL30, which is my recommended kit for AMD. There'll be an affiliate link down below if you're interested in that. And then disabling some AMD power settings as well as the integrated GPU on the CPU. There has always been some weird issues I found where if you leave the iGPU on on an AMD system, you're gonna have some issues. Would highly recommend disabling that. If you want full information on the BIOS settings that you need to use for AMD, please join my Discord. The tier two and bankroll memberships will be getting a full length video, unedited raw, where I go through every single setting that I recommend changing on an AMD CPU. So get subscribed and watch that video coming soon as well as more OC information to come so that you can max out your FPS. Other settings I've been interested in are C-States and power down mode slash memory context restore. The first one, C-States, is involved in allowing the CPU to down clock when it's not being utilized as much. For years, there have been reports that disabling this on AMD does actually cause a lot of issues and hurt your FPS, but people who are really latency caring always say disable it, it's better. But in both Call of Duty and Fortnite, this is way worse for the actual lows. This destroys your lows, making it worse than stock. So definitely keep C-States enabled. Power down mode and memory context restore did not help FPS at all, and it also was slightly worse than stock. Leave this on auto, which is enabled, and this also will get you faster boot times. So I find no reason to actually disable this because you get possibly worse performance and super slow boot times. Something nobody wants. I just wanna turn on my PC and it boot. And yes, before you comment, I did re-enable C-States before setting power down mode to disabled. Now, when I was testing, I decided to check Zen timings, which is a program where you can check your AMD's memory timings and speeds. And with 6,000 megahertz RAM, I was running at 2,100 megahertz FCLK. Now this Infinity Fabric speed for me is perfectly fine. I can run that, no issues, it's fully stable but the issue is that it's not properly synced. You typically wanna run a third of your memory speed as your Infinity Fabric. For example, if you're running 6,000 megahertz RAM, you wanna run at 2,000 FCOK, and if you're running at something like 6,400 on the high end, you wanna be running at 2,133 megahertz FCOK. When manually setting 2,000 megahertz FCOK, we do see a couple more FPS with optimized settings in COD, but less in Fortnite. Some games, it seems, do prefer to have that higher FCOK, that 100 megahertz, which can help kind of speed things up through the CPU. But just simple rule of thumb, keep it in a three to two ratio. This will make sure also that you are having a higher chance of stability and not having any issues. The most controversial test though I 100% did today was disabling SMT, simultaneous multi-threading. This is similar to Intel's hyper-threading. This causes the CPU to disable its extra threads and become an eight core, eight thread CPU. So terrible for multi-threading. People who are really focused on latency and esports swear by this and say this is the best setting ever. And I do kind of understand why. It does lower temperatures and it can allow a little bit higher overclocking room. 
But with just eight cores in 2024 going into 2025, you cannot have just eight threads. You have to have 16 threads. I was having so much worse FPS in COD. Now, Fortnite did in the benchmark actually show an improvement in FPS, but from my personal anecdote of actually playing hours and hours and days of Fortnite, I would just be getting random setters that when I re-enabled SMT would go away instantly. Now onto the part I really care about, memory overclocking. So just like in my previous review, I was running at 6200 CL28 on my memory. I was not able to do 6400, but when I did this, I did keep my three to two rule and I was at 2066 megahertz and you can finally see a massive increase in FPS. Average and lows is COD as well as Fortnite. Both are going significantly over optimized and something that shows that for me, RAM overclocking is not dead, something I love to see. Breaking my previous rule when coming to the syncing or FCLK, when I max it out to 2200, which is the highest I can do stably, you can see that the FPS is one with thin margin of error. Just keep it in that three to two ratio, proving that once again. I'm gonna admit that I was wrong. In my previous review, I was so excited to see that all core was allowed, and finally AMD unlocked that on these X3D CPUs because of them switching the cache and the actual CPU itself, the CCD. But it was shown to me and people kind of brought to my attention that all core is not as good as Precision Boost Overdrive, even at the same frequencies. Igor's lab has a really good deep dive on this that I will link down below because it is something that people need to understand and AMD needs to fix. When comparing a PBO with a plus 200 megahertz offset, which is the max you can do, you can see that in COD, all core actually does win significantly, but in Fortnite, it wins significantly again PBO does versus all core. My thought process behind this is that because of my CPU getting kind of warm in Call of Duty, it hits the CPU a lot harder. It's actually getting above 70 degrees, which is causing a little bit of down clocking in the CPU, causing something that with all core, it doesn't happen. Basically, I just kind of need to delid my CPU in direct die coming soon. So for most people, what I'm gonna recommend is that you just enable XMP, set those optimized settings, as well as enable PBO, because that's gonna get you the max FPS out of this chip, even if you don't know how to overclock. Overclocking does help with performance though, and if you are interested in getting your PC professionally tuned, go to chambertech.net where I do offer PC optimization services. In the future though, I'm definitely going to delid and direct eye my CPU as well as ECLK it, which is kind of overclocking with PBO. That's a feature of this X870E board that I have so that I can bring this CPU even higher and make it even faster. If you're interested in any of the products that I mentioned in the video, I will leave affiliate links down below as well as links to any of the articles I referenced. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Hit that like button down below, subscribe, join the Discord. Let me know if you're trying to buy a 9800X3D or if you're able to actually get one. And I'll see you guys later.